Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm actually here in Claremont, Florida at the Kalos headquarters. They have a three-day event called the HVACR Training Symposium. Now, this is a really cool event that they have. This is the second year they've had it, and there's a lot of training going on, a lot of cool tools being presented. So, let's go check it out. Put an extra hose in there. I use it as a go bag and you have a couple extra things. And I'm sorry? The most simple way for What kind of, what kind of uh, presentation could be given, Zach? Really appreciate it. I'm already losing my voice from yelling last night and all kinds of other things, you know, bossing people around, pointing a lot, not actually doing anything myself because that's, uh, that's how I roll. But I do want to right off the top thank uh, Danielle Wexler, Sean and Claire about my wife, Leilani. They really did an amazing job of setting this all up. So we can give them a quick round of applause. Um, as we go through the events, we're going to actually be able to put some. There he is. Okay. <laughs> hearing about this, I'm like, hey, someone's review book of review of that for service engineers. He's like, yeah, that's our book. We have that. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So it's like all this science, I'm working at a company, validation is helpful, is when, and, and here's an interesting thing, is all vacuum gauges, they, they measure what's called partial pressure, right? So again, that's a thermal conductivity gauge. So you gotta think about the gas that's in that system versus the gas the gauge is calibrated for. The flux is now in the rod, which allows you to be able to do this. But this, this is the coolest thing on the market right now, guys. This is going to become one of those things that you need to have in your toolbox no matter what. Now, uh, you noticed when I was talking about alloy salt, it was alloy salt, okay? Salt being solder, alloy being aluminum. This is alcop brace. What does that mean? <laughs> aluminum to <laughs> copper, right? Okay, and you're all, uh, you're all done. Now, the flux will carry it all the way around to the other side. If you want it to add a little bit more, you just lay the rod right there, and it just flows like butter. So the question you always have to ask is, can you cover the middle? And let's look at a couple different pieces of equipment. And so let's pretend we're going to do a single stage heat pump that is actually going to put out three tons all the time, which uh, I guess if we do a hyperheat or something like that. The condenser coils are smaller, which means that if you don't have a really clear strategy for maintaining ductless, if you're installing ductless, then you're going to get into trouble, meaning you're going to have unhappy customers. Bypass ports are opened, as we talked about. We're bleeding that back off back into the suction gas, back in the shell, just to come back in and load up again. Starts to get one o'clock in the afternoon, kids are coming in and out, high load on the building, it loads up. A little bit and going from there. All right, so we're just gonna heat the end of the rod. We're gonna dip it in the flux, right? We're just going to melt the flux off onto our repair. And nice and easy, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay that rod right there and melt the rod into our repair. Now notice where the flame's at right now, right? It's taking a little longer because it's not as hot, but that's okay. We're not in a hurry, right? Wow. So this event has been a lot of fun. So many good speakers, I'm learning a ton. Uh, it's a really cool event to come to. A lot of cool tools are here being presented, some cool products as well. Just having a good time. We still got two more days. It's pretty awesome. Be able to bond two dissimilar metals together at 350 degrees, right, is unheard of. That's the same temperature my wife bakes cookies at. So in reality, if you can do that and put a filler metal in between two dissimilar metals and have a bond that is as strong as 20,000 PSI, then you have something that if you're underneath a house and you're in a tight spot or you're up in an attic, you could use a butane torch to be able to uh, make that fixed. Ways that this works 
um, to begin with. We've got, if you want to just measure airflow, if you already know what's going on with the static pressures. All right, so I'm here on day two, guys. Trainings are going on. It's nice and sunny. It's a little warm today. Um, but man, being here shows me how much I've got to learn. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing. So if you're in a location where you know it's just crazy long and it's not going to work, go to one side of the system first, take those measurements, and press the freeze button. That'll lock those readings in there so that you can go to the other part of your system, do the same thing, lock them in there, and generate the report with your measurements. So this guy, straight on. That simple. Not a whole lot of tricks to it. So these things look the same, but they're not the same. There's no, there's no hole in the chip. Yeah. Standing in front of a unit, I put this into the duct. Everybody is always fixated on heat exchanger, you know, failures and things like that. And it's just like Dave was saying, it's not the heat exchanger that's really the issue in 99% of CO poisoning. It's actually that there's the furnace, if, if, if it comes from your furnace at all, which is highly unlikely, if it comes from your furnace at all, it's because it's produced by your furnace and there's a path to get it back into your house. The furnace is not likely the problem. It's everything that's attached to the furnace that you got to look at. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to sign away. Oh, I didn't even realize you were taking a photo. <laughs> so if you have a 2x4 stud wall, it'll just come out the back a little bit. Bring the condensate electrical string out the back, or you can bring it down from the unit as well. Classrooms in the back corner. In both of those places, we're going to have equipment set up, or we do have equipment set up. Over here, we have a gas furnace. Uh, we, we literally just built this training unit in the last couple of days. All right, so we are here on day three. I'm actually going to be speaking this morning with uh, Tersh and Robert Orr. We're going to be talking about some business ethics. So it should be a good conversation. Uh, and we're also going to check out everything. It's actually open to the public today, so there's going to be quite a bit more people here, hopefully. And um, yeah, we're going to check everything out. should be a good day. Hi. You say hi. So, on that electricity and magnetism go hand in hand, and there's so many ways that we can use to teach this. Of course, especially when I get to capacitors and backing them up, they're starting to see that that motor's spinning. You got the other leg. You're creating, you're adding to that energy field. <laughs> The unique thing is, if I went the opposite way, the leak detector is close to, or pretty quick to react to where I'm still in that cloud, but it's just showing me I have a less, uh, less concentration I'm picking up. But as I get closer and get right on top of it, it really starts to pick up. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up the third day of this event. We are wrapping it up for the weekend. Man, I've had a blast. I've learned so much. Had a good time talking to everybody meeting some of the guys that I've seen on YouTube and social media platforms and finally being able to see them face to face. That was really cool. Um, but I'm just humbled to be here. I really appreciate Brian inviting me to come out here and checking out this whole event. So I've had a good time. But that's going to wrap it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. You got something out of it. Hit that thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, see you guys later. Woo!